What's up, everybody? Hi! Hello! Welcome to the Kitchen and Jorn Show. I'm Jorn. And I am also here. Yeah. Wait, I, welcome to the Kitchen and Jorn Show. I'm well, Jorn. I'm Jorn. No. Welcome to the Jitchin and Jinjin and Jorn. Welcome to the Crippin' and Boob Show. Oh, there's Brie. And Brie's here. Okay. Hi, Brie. Bye, Brie. That's Brie. That's Brie. She's Kristen's wife. She came with the house. <laughs> Kristen shot a video a few weeks ago where she talked about her polycystic ovary syndrome and a lot of people had questions answered, a lot of people seemed to respond positively to the video. I think actually I learned a lot too. It was like a really well done video. Good job Kitchen and Jorn LLC, 50 years of excellence. But um, <laughs> That's what it says on our checks. It does say that. We realized like, okay, people like hearing more personal things. Also, I'm still recovering from COVID, so we're doing a sit down video, we're gonna chat, and I thought I could share a story that might be helpful to people. It's a story about my experience with PMDD. Let's define what PMDD is for the people in the cheap seats. All right, so pretty much deep and what that means is, I was just- Pepperoni, mozzarella, delicious, delicious. Delicious, delicious. <laughs> what does PMDD stand for? Okay, so I'm gonna look it up. I can actually tell you what it is. What does PMD, post-traumatic No, so PMDD disorder. is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Yes, I'm actually gonna read the definition online. Premenstrual dysphoric disorder, a severe, sometimes disabling extension of premenstrual syndrome. It's a severe form of premenstrual syndrome that can include physical and behavioral symptoms that usually resolve with onset of menstruation. Before I talk about PMDD in my experience, I'll do a little trigger warning for suicidal ideation, body talk, a little bit of talk of that blood, blood, blood. I'm probably yeah. gonna talk about my snatch a little bit. Depression. Let's talk, Depression. 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 We're gonna talk about like sewer slide. <laughs> <laughs> slip and slide. We're talking about <laughs> slip and slide ideation. S sewer sliding ideation. <laughs> sewer, sewer slide ideal. We laugh sewer. because that's we've all we yes. have been there personally. We so have, this is like have, our experience. We have been on the sewer slide. I've yeah. <laughs> I've, I've sewer slided we, down. We've uh, we've like we joke, but it's true. I started menstruating on my 14th birthday, which was fun. I was sitting in science class and I was like, hmm, did I piss myself? <laughs> And I didn't investigate it until I went home. <laughs> so I was like, there's nothing I can do if I did. Um, what? There's many things you could do. Nah, it was too much effort. And I was like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> it was egg drop day. And so I would say for the first like 10 years of having my period, I was like not really noticing anything super extreme with my PMS. Like I kind of was like, okay, you know, it's whatever, it's fine. And keep in mind the 10 years between like 14 to 24, I was also like probably at my most mentally unstable. So it's like, I probably was experiencing PMDD symptoms back then, but it's like, I was a teenager. I was depressed about literally everything. It was probably around my like mid twenties just because my life had started to stabilize that I started sort of like actually paying attention to my body. And so I would say it was probably around 25 when um, I started to notice, like I was like, oh, f like I feel really, really, really terrible, like before my period. I was like, okay, like this is just, this is PMS. This is PMS. Yes! I wasn't really experiencing physical symptoms in that I wasn't experiencing like really bad cramping or anything like that. So I kind of was just like, this is normal because it's just, it's just, it's just in my head. So it's not a real problem. Um, <laughs> it's not you. I kind of was like, well, I don't really want to get on, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't want to do anything about it because I didn't want to. Because you're, you're yeah, you. Yeah, that's me. I was like, this, this requires effort and time and like, oh, I could do that. Or I could play with my Nintendo Switch. As like months passed, in my mid 20s, um, it was kind of like I noticed that I was having like pretty extended PMS symptoms, and that like the pre period depression was like getting more pronounced and also was like kind of affecting my life a lot more. I kind of resign myself because I didn't want, I was like, I'm kind of in denial that this was a problem. I was like, for two weeks out of the month, everybody shut the f up. Like that my is... solution was for two weeks out of the month, I'm gonna be the biggest C word around and all of you just f deal with it. I would feel terrible in the buildup to like my period. And then like the week of the period, it would like kind of dissipate. And then I'd have like a week and a half of normalcy and then it would get back to PMS yeah. time. And then it would be like, okay, two weeks of just depression. Other people in my life were like noticing, like they were like, I feel like you're, you're blaming PMS 
for like a high percentage of time. <laughs> PMS is causing problems for you for too long. But in my head, I was like, everyone, like this is normal. I will be incredibly, incredibly depressed and miserable. And in some cases experience like suicidal ideation mm. that would just kind of go away after I had my period. I remember the first time I broached this to you. It wasn't that you were being like, I guess in your terms, a bitch. It would just be like, you would just be like, miserable. The, the world is ending. Yeah. You'd be like, everything, my life is terrible. Everything's falling apart. I don't, I look, I'm, I'm stupid. Like you would just be like, you would just be a mess. I remember the first time I was like, hey bud, I think there might be a connection between the fact that like for two weeks out of the month, you are, in absolute hell with the fact that it seems to be happening around your period. And I seem to recall you taking that like. Well, cause it, here's the thing. I just was like, I, and this is a me problem. I'm one of those people who just like, it, you know, because probably because of my ADHD and executive dysfunction, whatever, whatever. It's like multi-step problems just like really stress me out. And so I was like, if this is a thing that my PMS is just wacky, I was like, well, that's annoying because I'm going to have to solve that with administrative work. <laughs> And that I wasn't interested in. It was actually in 2020, like May 2020 pandemic times. I kind of was like, okay, the world is really scary and bad right now. And my PMS is what I was calling it is like, I can't keep doing this. And I think also there were so many other changes. Like we were working on launching the channel. We had left our previous jobs. Obviously like there was a global pandemic and we were in lockdown. And then I seem to recall coming to you at one point and being like, hey bud, we have to be able to work like more than two, two weeks, weeks out of the month. month. I have to take my monthly two week vacation of misery. <laughs> like all working were people you, do. You, I remember you being like, I guess I will attempt to talk to someone about it, but like I refuse to do more than one thing. It better be easy and <laughs> spoiler, thank God it actually was. I make an appointment with a new gynecologist and I was like, all right, I'm gonna see a gynecologist and you know, get my pappy, 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 happy, dappy, slappy smear done. And just like Your sidebar. Pap smear. Whatever. This is when I was still living in my old apartment. So day of my gynecologist appointment where I'm just gonna lay it all out there. I'm gonna be like, lady, there's something up happening. <laughs> so it's like 10 a.m., my appointment's at noon, I'm having a good time, just in my house. My roommate left to go hang out with her girlfriend, doing whatever. Mm -hmm. And I hear this like big clunk. And I'm thinking to myself, what, what the was that? I <laughs> go into my kitchen and my water heater has exploded. And not only has it exploded, but it is shooting just boiling hot water everywhere. It's and having it, its period. It's having its period and it's flooding my apartment. So like I call my landlord and he's like, is it an emergency? And I was like, yes, yeah. come over. It's, it exploded to my roommate. Cause like I had called her, you don't have to come home, but this is an emergency. The water heater exploded, it's flooding our apartment. She was like, well, what about your gynecology appointment? And I was like, I'm not gonna go to that. Like, you know, and she was like, no, I'm coming home. <laughs> Like she was like, this is like my roommate, also my close friend. She was like, uh, no, like you're going to that appointment. I don't, I will deal with the water heater exploding if I, it means that you will solve this problem. We had all collectively reached a point where it was just like, hey bud, something's yeah. gotta change. Like, so this gynecologist in particular is also a midwife. I really did not know what to expect, but he was actually really lovely because the gynecologist was a really, really nice doctor. And she really understood like the emotional component to all of this stuff. You know, I was like, I'm describing my, I want to describe my PMS symptoms because I don't think they're super normal. And she was like, what? And I was like, well, I basically get like super depressed and like mega suicidal for like two weeks out of the month. And then it kind of just like disappears. It was crazy, right? And she was like, girl, what? Like. <laughs> You were very habituated to the fact that you were just like, I'm just gonna be like this for two weeks out of the year. And like everyone's- No, no, two, two weeks out of the month. Two weeks out of the month, sorry. I'm sorry. You were, you were so- Two weeks out of the year is me now. Yes. <laughs> I think about how much like time I wasted. It does make me feel like sad. I should have fixed this sooner, but that's, that's life. life. It's life experience. It's life. She was like, have you ever heard of PMDD? And I said, I've heard of double Ds. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually say that? No, I, did, I don't know. I didn't say that. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I, I said. I heard double D's in my mouth. I don't know. <laughs> You're very much just like, if I am going to be vulnerable, I will throw you boob jokes within an inch of my life. Yeah, pretty much. My doctor was like, have you ever heard of this? Because that, she's like, it sounds like what you're describing is not normal PMS. She's like, it's not normal to ha like experience suicidal ideation 
every month in the lead up to your period. We can treat it with antidepressants. We can also treat it with birth control. She's like, everybody responds differently, so it's gonna be a process. And she was like, but I want you to tell you, if we can fix this for you or alleviate your symptoms, we're gonna change your life. I remember her saying that, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> sure, lady. We'll change this. Change this. Middle fingers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you went middle oh, fingers. Went, I went, let me just show you my boobs. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Change this, maybe. The doctor was like, let's get you on birth control. And I was like, listen, lady. I was on the old BC back in 2011 for the old acne. And I gotta tell you, I did not take it. I was not remembering to take those pills every day at the same time. Not happening. You can't give me something I have to do every day at the same time. You can't make me follow a schedule. That's Yeah, I was like, that's... that's and it's offensive that you would ask. Yeah, actually. I was like, I don't know if the pills are the way to go. And she was like, okay, well, what about the Nuvering? And I was like, what's that, Doc? And she was like, it's a hormonal ring. You insert it vaginally. And you just replace it, you, you take it out every like three weeks and you have your period for a week and then you can put a new one in. She was like, but let's try this. I noticed a change real fast. Yeah, that was, so, it was pretty quick. <laughs> uh, so here's the thing, hormonal birth control, like it affects everybody differently. So I know that like, I, I got really lucky in that we found one that worked for me. But not only was my PMS really bad, my periods were really long and very heavy. I was having like seven to eight days of like really heavy bleeding. So it was like, just like they were taking too long. I'm spending so much money on like period products and like, you know, I'm not earning any of it back. There's no, no reward there's no program. Return. I don't get like, you know, it's not like I'm turning in like corn I've picked. It's like, no, I just have all this gross blood and I throw it out. <laughs> my kernels. No one's paying me. So my I got, harvest. My harvest. Birth control was actually pretty great for me in that. For harvest. For my harvest. Hey, because it really, it reduced my crops. What it did, thankfully, is that it, I guess, regulated my hormones to the point where my periods and my PMDD symptoms became so much, so much better. Basically, like my periods became shorter and manageable. And also this coincided with, I got on antidepressants a few months after getting on Nuvering, which granted I was getting on antidepressants for like other reasons. Like I'd been going through a lot in 2020 and I was like, you know what? I think it's time to get some help. Nuvering on its own did help a lot. And then also combining that with antidepressants changed everything. My PMS is so different. Like I will still experience like maybe one or two days of like irritability or like mood swings. I always know when it's coming now because it's literally when I have to take my Nuvering out, that's, that's the week of the period. It gave me so much time back. It gave me, like you don't realize until you're not depressed anymore how much depression takes from you in terms of your ability to like use your time in a way that is fun and good and interesting and, and productive and happy. One of my friends told me, she was like, honestly, it feels like you're yourself again. She's like, yes. I feel like I have a version of you that I haven't seen in years. I remember like the first few months being like, oh, what the f Like being kind of just like, I was so stubborn about this for so long. This is just how I am forever. This is how I'll be and I'm not fixing it. I was, stop yeah. asking me I was like, eventually it. when I'm 50, my periods will stop and I'll be super, super stable because I'm sure menopause will not be an issue for me at all. No. I'm sure hormonally I've got it figured out. I honestly was just you're being, just, I was being a little lazy and a little stubborn. You're, you're, you're a very stubborn person, <laughs> which is one of the good things about you. What? <laughs> Yeah, I know, I'm pretty annoying. Um, that's another good thing about me. Because in, in a hostage situation, they'll kill me first because they want me to shut the f up. For so long, you were so resistant to it. And I think like one thing I was worried about is that you were gonna start taking medication and it wasn't gonna work right away. And that you were You'd gonna- be like, I give up. You were gonna give up. Which to be fair, I would never do that now, now that I like know sometimes medications can work and they do help you. Mm -hmm. But I think what sucks and what is really hard is that like, A, when like your symptoms are really intense depression, the idea that I could do anything to fix it was like, I, it was kind of like when I was in that those horrible two weeks every month, it was like, I'm so depressed. What am I supposed to do? Like, I don't have any motivation to do anything. Mm -hmm. All I can do is like try to survive and like keep feeling whatever. Mm -hmm. And then in the two weeks when I was sort of coming out of it, it was like, I gotta catch up on all this I did. You want me to go see a doctor <laughs> in West Hollywood? Really? I do like to tell people, I was like, if you want to feel better, like I know it can happen. Mm -hmm. It's It can be possible. It doesn't mean that it'll happen that fast, but it's like, I do think it's worth it to try. Even though I also understand when you're dealing with like really intense PMS, PMDD, it's really hard. Mentally, I have to get there with physical injuries, but when something is wrong mentally, yes. I am like, okay, I understand that it might take a while to treat it, 
but I have to go to the doctor. You With are, physical injuries, I'm taking, I still have so some lessons to learn, okay? Hard. Sometimes it's like when you break your arm, you should go to the doctor the first day. I don't think there's a lot of education about like menstrual disorders as we know, like they're just kind of like, mm, figure it out, losers. I just really thought it was normal. Mm -hmm. um, and now, now that I like get a, got a lot of my life back, which is what it felt like, I love like feeling like I get to be okay most of the time. Yeah, which is like how you should feel. Yeah. My doctor said to me, if this works, it'll change your life. And she was right. It, it changed my life like immensely oh my for God. the better. You just said someone was right? Someone was right. Who wasn't you? It wasn't me. But what? In, the, the thing is though, it's like that, this thing, what? someone else being right and me what? being right are not mutually exclusive. Did I use that correctly? Yeah. Of course I did. <laughs> because I'm always right. Because I'm always right. Everything I do is great because everything I do, I do. <laughs> you ladies know. Jen says this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right. Jen right. Jen is right. Jen is right all the time. Yes. No. That's the story of Jen has PMDD, was very stubborn, was living in misery for several years, and then got some help. I'm so glad you did. It's yeah. a good story. It's a good story. Cool. Hopefully this helped or answered some questions, or at the very least made you think, hmm, maybe I should try some BC. Because hey, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not. You know what it is? Murder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's been All our right. show. Well, that's our show. Bye. Bye, I love you. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Winky, winky.